Hello, hello, it's Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. I see some folks, uh, and I've been chatting with folks in the chat for the last couple of minutes. So if you could hop in and say whether you can, oops, I have no you idea why a my- fitness instructor uses staples.com to find the right supplies for her business at the right- Oh, so sorry about that, guys. I had a, I had my watch page open in another, in another tab, and <laughs> just completely, uh, it completely started, so. Um, hopefully you can hear me. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's been a while since I've done a live stream. So I am completely rusty and everyone's talking about their weather. It is hot in a lot of places. It is pleasant here. It was raining this morning, but it's supposed to get nice and warm this afternoon. So well, I'm hoping to open up the windows and let some fresh air in and get some spring cleaning done and all of that, but I thought, you know, I really want to do a live stream and to go through the sketchbook I just finished because I don't know about you guys, but when I finish a sketchbook, I feel really accomplished. Um, I generally have a lot of sketchbooks going at once, so I probably have about a dozen going right now. So when I finish one, it actually spans a couple years and it's fun to see like and look back on things I did a year or two ago it could, just because it's fun it's fun to see like how you've changed and grown and that's why I encourage everyone to keep a sketchbook or a dozen if you're like me uh, it's always fun when I find like my summer sketchbooks that are usually tucked away in like a beach bag or my travel bag and then it's, it's just neat to look back at, at different places I've gone and things that I've done so okay uh the sound and video is okay wonderful all right and any incidental noises around the house i apologize for i just the furnace just started because we're still it's main it's april it, the furnace comes on all the time but uh, i don't think it'll be too loud in here so hopefully um hopefully it won't bother anyone so we're going to start off this sketchbook here was uh, made as a gift for me about two years ago from my friend rosie and she actually every time i would use a sketchbook on a video people would say where'd you get that i want to get one and rosie was like i make them for fun for people i love i'm not gonna sell them i'm not gonna sell them and finally i guess after being pestered enough by viewers here on the channel she decided to sell them and um she got a great little shop on etsy she did not ask me to promote her sketchbooks but i just really like them and she actually was running a 20 percent off sale so i thought i would do the flip through while her sale was on and that way people could take advantage of it if they wanted to so um so there's a link in the video description it is i did write it down to it is um, artsyrosie.etsy.com if you type that in or click the link and also my new course watercolor crayon workshop is uh now launched and there's a 50 percent off special for the month for the launch month so subscribers can get the best price and at the end of the video if you want i can show you the artwork that we're doing in that class um but without further ado let's get on to the sketchbook now this sketchbook is not necessarily done in order because I used to do my sketchbook I would paint only on the um the right hand side I only paint on one side of the paper but this has arches paper in it and the paper is sturdy enough to do both sides so I often will like work like flip back and end up going on the back sides of some of the pages um you know, after a while, like this is one I just, these are just some little doodles that I did last weekend because I noticed I never did the cover page, the first page. So I wanted to, uh, to finish it up and, um, and I did. So I was just playing with the My Mary Blue watercolors. I can show you that palette. I'll have a review on that coming up. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to schedule it. It's already recorded, but I haven't scheduled it yet, but that's this set of watercolors. Actually, it, there were 12 that came in the set. It was a very strange sec selection of colors. So if you ignore what's in the middle and just look at these colors and these colors, it's an odd little set, but I already had some My Mary Blue watercolors in tubes. So I decided to just put all my My Mary Blue paints in here. But um, yeah, so I'll be talking about the different sketches. Hope hopefully it's not boring. Um, but if there's videos for any of these, I will mention them. And this was just, I was just kind of... Um, I don't know. I was just kind of playing around with a sketchbook. I had just received it. And um, then I actually went back in and added some watercolor crayon. But this was like the scribble sticks ones because I was just testing them to see if they would be opaque enough for my class. But they really weren't. But I wanted to try it out on something. Um, again, these were just me playing in the sketchbook. Generally, it takes me a few pages to get going in a new sketchbook to kind of get my feel for it and how I like to use it. Um, this is um, a stitched one, so it does lay really nice and flat. And I hadn't had a handmade sketchbook before or a sketchbook with arches paper. So it was kind of, um, um, I feel like these do not do the paper justice. 
And I was actually on, um, I was camping when I was doing these pages. And so I was just kind of sitting on a blanket outside, uh, just kind of painting from memory. So I got some, you know, just some random flowers. I tend to, I tend to just kind of do roses when I'm testing a paint or I don't really know what to paint. I tend to paint flowers. And we get some more roses and a wreath for some reason. I think I was just kind of thinking about like uh, holiday designs and I like teal and red together. So I was just kind of playing. And your sketchbook does not need to be filled with Instagram worthy, beautiful paintings. And that's another reason I like to do a sketchbook flip through because they're not all like finished works of art. There's mess, there's um, mistakes, there's trying stuff out because I try stuff out in sketchbooks. And then sometimes if something's good, then I film a tutorial on it. So I like to mine my sketchbooks for ideas. Uh, I was just kind of uh, play, painting a blue jay feather there. And then I was actually trying out a brush like this was just a, a couple days ago I was trying out a brush and I just painted a couple other little feathers in the margins so you know I'll come back and I'll just doodle in and and add things this was sitting um, by the fire pit at the place I was camping and just uh, painting what I saw in front of me uh, these are some water lilies or water lilies uh, I would get in my I would either sit out on the dock or I would get out in um, in the canoe or kayak and I would just paddle out a bit to a water lily and paint it. I really like how this one came out. Um, I added some pen and ink to it as well. There's a, these little purple flowers that um, they're all over the place in the pond and I liked how I could see the roots of the water lilies. I thought that was really fun and uh, and I just I enjoyed how that came out. I don't remember how long that took me but it probably took me longer than than I realized because you know, I wasn't filming. I was just sitting outside and, and painting and have a, having a good time. And uh, those were, again, I was just kind of playing around with that My Mary Blue paint. And I had noticed I hadn't painted this page. So uh, I thought it'd be fun to paint some bugs. And so I just did the little beetle and a, like a little wasp. And I was just just kind of playing around. There's a quite a couple. There's a cobalt green color in that. So I was kind of playing with that because that's a color that tends to granulate. The selection was very strange in that palette, but it was also kind of fun because, um, you know, usually when you get a limited palette, it contains like the same split primary arrangement with a few earth tones. And it was just an interesting set of colors. So it was fun to see what I could do with that. And this right here, I have a live stream of this painting and this little, it was a perfume bottle actually. So you can find that on my YouTube channel. I did that before, right about the time I was releasing my watercolor glass class. So that would have been about two years ago, well, 2020. But there is a tutorial for that for free on my YouTube channel, a live stream, if you want to paint that. I think there might even be a pattern. I might have even uploaded a pattern. And and I have to apologize. A bunch of my old YouTube videos, like I'll have patterns there. And I used to store my patterns on Google Drive. And Google Drive did this thing where they made everything that was up on our drives private and so people can't access all these patterns that I put up it's very frustrating I try to get in and approve anytime people request them but um sometimes I don't see it uh it's just very it's very strange and again I was uh, oh that right there um a lot of times if I'm if I like uh, try out a new set of watercolors I had I couldn't resist Amazon had these watercolors it was a set of 48 and it was like 15 dollars and I'm like well I need a new tin so if these paints are awful I'll just buy it for the tin and it was the doodle hog paints and they weren't they, the set of 48, they weren't the worst, but they weren't the best. And it turns out they're like identical to the ones that Hobby Lobby sells in the tins, but it was like 15 bucks. So for the tin, I figured it was worth it. So I was just kind of playing with that. Oddly enough, though, the Doodle Hog set of 36 is, is much better paint. It's totally different than what was, what was in the 48 set. I don't know what's up with that. And I don't even know if it's the same case anymore because oftentimes companies just change, completely change what they're selling um, without changing the listings on Amazon. But it's a, it's a, it's like the wild west out there, I swear. <laughs> okay, and uh, yeah, another, more roses. I don't know what it is about roses, I just enjoy them. Um, this was just a little, I think this might have been an imagination landscape. Sometimes I just feel like, you know, just splash and paint around. That's a lot of what I do in a sketchbook. I just feel like splash and paint around. And uh, something I was working with is uh, just like, you know, doing my scrapey rocks, but also... Um, with the mist here, I, I think I blotted off, I painted it, then I blotted off the paper. And then I think I sprayed the edges with water to try to get that misty effect. And then I spattered on some blue afterwards. I love to paint the, I love to paint crashing waves. Uh, this is a plum that was done with white nights watercolors. I don't know why I remember that. I don't remember what I painted that one with. 
Uh, oh yeah, I was kind of playing with, um, and there is a tutorial, and it's it's uh, it's very similar to this. This was the practice one that I did. I was doing some Christmas, just some Christmas card, hand painted Christmas card designs, um, and I think this might be. It's either, you know what it is? I think it's a tutorial where I, I think I might've even used, oh, I think it was Prestigify paints, like the fan paints by Superior that everybody's selling now. They're all the same. Um, but I did, uh, I did a card and I think a tag and wrapping paper. And this is the, the design I used for the, for the um, card. So that's on my YouTube channel for free if you want to check that out. And that was just some other motifs I was playing with because I had, the sketchbooks are not meant for finished art. It's meant for just playing and, um, you know, working stuff, working ideas out. And I feel a little weird about that because this is such nice paper to just be, kind of be experimenting on. But, you know, if you're like me, you tend to collect so much stuff that it's like, if, if you're not going to use a good paper now, when are you going to use it? I mean, it's going to be sold for a quarter in the estate sale when you die if you don't. So you might as well use it. And I do have a tutorial for the carnations here. I was just kind of fooling around with uh, just really loose carnations and uh, getting that um the technique down to a very easy reproducible lesson so that happened so i got three of these actually that's the one i did on camera um so a lot of times that's that's part of it it's like i'm trying to paint something but i'm trying to simplify it to just get the essence so and make it like um as least complicated as i can that was playing and there's a tutorial for this too and i believe that that might have even been on a review for Derwin Inktense Pan Paints, or it might be its own thing. I can't remember, but I do have a tutorial for that. And the uh, it was basically using really, really vibrant watercolors as pastel. So that was the uh, kind of lesson behind that one. This one's really fun, though. If you're a beginner painter and you don't feel very confident or you just want to, if you're a more experienced painter and you just want to loosen up, that's a really fun one. And it's a perfect size to do on a greeting card or a postcard or a bookmark or something. So, um, yeah, I mean, you could practice and make a bunch of bookmarks or a bunch of greeting cards or postmarks, uh, postcards and then like send them off. So I like stuff like that. I'm not sure what I was doing with this one, but it was um, this. My sister had given me a plant for Mother's Day and it was like pansies and geraniums, I think. And they were in this little galvanized bucket and I thought it was pretty. So I was just doing a loose painting and I I kind of crapped out on it. I, I, I guess I got a little ways into it. And I'm like, ah, I don't feel like painting this anymore. And there it sits kind of half done. But, you know, just because you start a painting doesn't mean you have to finish it. I mean, there's no rules. And now we're getting into paintings I did during World Watercolor Month this summer. So I guess I used that a lot during the summer and up to Christmas. And then I must have kind of forgotten about it for a while. And now we're back at summertime. And I go through um, I go through ebbs and flows with different sketchbooks. Sometimes I use them. I'll use one for a while. Then I'll set it aside and I'll use other ones and then I'll pick it back up. So there could be months in between when I... Um, when I pick up a sketchbook again. This one, I can't remember what the prompt was, but I had a spilled bottle of ink and that was, a, it was a really quick one too because I didn't have a lot of time to paint that day, but I just thought it would be kind of fun just to splash my paint around like I'd spilled ink. Oh, I see a question popping up and I apologize if I've missed others, but I will, I will stop for questions at some point. Uh, this is from Law Lamp 36 uh, having a hard time finding the Etsy link for the sketchbook, please help. It's in the video description. If you look under the video player, it should be right there. It's, um, it is artsy Rosie. Hey, well, here it is. I, I wrote it out so I wouldn't forget artsy Rosie.etsy.com. But I did put a link in, I think if I didn't put a link in, I will go back in after the video and paste it in there, but it's, it's artsy with an I and Rosie with an I. And this was uh, another World Watercolor Month prompt, and I used the Genzai Tambi, Tambi, Tambi watercolors, and I can't remember what the prompt was, but anyway, I thought a, a crocodile, like, kind of, uh, I think it might have been peep, like, peeping through the water or something, I, I decided to do a crocodile for it. And uh, this was another World Watercolor Month prompt, and I believe the prompt was breathe, so I did a mouth. Oh, thank you, Joe. Joe put the link in the chat, guys. So if it's not show, if it's not in my video description, you can grab it in the chat, and then I will double check before we're done. And this one right here was for World Watercolor Month, and the prompt was memories. And this was black raspberry ice cream from an ice cream parlor that used to be right across the street from my elementary school when I was a kid. I think it was called like the Sea Breeze or something like that. 
but uh, that's what I used to get. And that's what I just immediately would pop to head when I thought of memories. And these also were World Watercolor Month drawings. That one was very frustrating. I can't remember what the prompt was, but I remember it was late and I hadn't done my challenge yet. And once I decide I'm doing a challenge, like I will not go to bed until it's done. I am like, I get very, um, very type A about things like that. It's like if I started something, I, did, I can like let a painting go. I don't have to finish a painting that I've started. I don't have to finish a book that I've started reading. But if I say I'm doing a challenge, then I'm going to do it and I'm going to post it. So um like those paintings that I, before that I didn't finish, I didn't post them, but this one's like, okay, it's going to be post worthy at least. But uh, so I can't remember what the challenge was, but I did a cup of tea and it was the bane of my existence the whole time I was working on it. I was so frustrated, but I, I like it now that I've kind of forgot, forgotten why I was so upset with it and why I was so frustrated with it. And this one here, there's a tutorial for this one. I, I think I'm pretty sure I did a tutorial on this one. And the, the um, prompt was effervescence, I think. And uh, let's see, this one there I did uh, a tutorial for. I think the prompt is Bloom. And this one right here, I think I was playing with some really, really, really cheap watercolor. I think. I think I was using the stuff that I bought. I bought, well, I'll show it to you guys. The palette is so cool. But sadly, it's no longer available. But I got to show you this palette because it's so cool. I kind of a... Um, I kind of have a problem with novelty palettes, but uh, I saw this on Amazon. It was like $6.99. And I thought that palette is the coolest thing. And it's a nice deep palette. So I could actually put more half pans in there if I wanted to, but I don't think I'll need to. Um, so it's got like, I think that's 36 different wells. Plus you got these little spaces there. Plus you've got like more wells here and they're pretty deep. And then you've got this mixing area. And I don't know what came over me, but. I saw this children's palette on Amazon. Oh, it comes with a water brush too. That's how you know it's it's good. And uh, I had to I had to have it. And my plan was I was just going to dig out the paint. And I was going to put maybe I don't know my watercolor crayon shavings or something in here. But I'm like, well, I got to try the paint first. And um, and actually, it wasn't horrible. <laughs> it was actually I've got some swatches that I did. It's not bad. It it wasn't it wasn't terrible. I've got a pile of swatches. Well, maybe I'll find them later. I'm. Yeah, they're in, they're, in that, they're in a pile behind me somewhere. But anyway, <laughs> that's what that paint was. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. So I was kind of playing with that because why not, you know? This was really fun. I did this. Uh, I took a photo. This was during World Watercolor Month. I can't remember what the prompt was, but I was um, down. I take the dog down to a ball field and I let her run loose. And there was this rusty chain uh, around a lock. And I just um, I took a photo of it. And I really liked how that came out. So I did a live stream on painting rust and that is up on my channel as well. If you want to check it out, it's um, the same techniques, just a different, just a different kind of iteration of it, but that's fun. It's fun to do textures and watercolor. I think um, there's a tutorial for that. Um, and sometimes I'll like, especially world, world watercolor month, I end up doing the painting and then I take a photo of it and put it on Instagram. And then I will often get requests. People will say, would you do, is there a tutorial? Would you do a tutorial of that? And if people are interested, most of the time I do, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, pretty easy going. If someone asks, I often, I will just, you know, film a tutorial for it. And both of these, I ended up filming tutorials after the fact for them. And I can't remember what that one was. But um, I actually I don't remember what either of those tutorials were, but the paint that I used for these was such a steal. It was the Art Whale watercolor tubes, which are actually the superior watercolor tubes, but the superior tubes to buy the set of 24, I think it was close to $100. But the Art Whale ones were like, I think they might be like $35 now, but they were like, I snagged them for like 24, maybe 20. I can't remember. It was cheap and they were fabulous. The pans were, were okay, but the tubes were just great and they had beautiful granulation. And I just had a ball playing with those. And I did both of those with that. Actually, I think I did quite a few little paintings in here with those paints, but um, that was quite a steal. If you see them on a good sale, I say snag them up. The only thing is the cerulean blue is probably going to be hard in the tube, but just cut the tube off and put it in your palette as long as you know ahead of time. Other than that, the paints were fantastic. Uh, I think I might have used like water brush pens, like the real brush pen markers, or maybe even Winsor Newton watercolor markers for that. I think that was a watercolor marker painting. And I don't know if I did a tutorial on that or not, but I've got a lot of leaves on my YouTube channel. So if you're 
you're looking for it, you can you can definitely find something similar. This one right here, I don't remember. I you know I did do a tutorial for this one. That's right, I did, and uh, I can't remember what the prompt was, but it was another world water watercolor month. Something I'm noticing though, like because usually I only paint on one side of a sketchbook. I don't paint on. I leave like the backs unpainted because I always think, well, what if I want to like cut up my sketchbook in the future and frame some. Um, and I'm noticing that I'm getting some transferring if I've used colored pencils on stuff and it's kind of rubbed onto the other side. I think I probably could clean that up with a, with a kneaded eraser or even a regular eraser. I got a kneaded eraser right here. We can... Oh yeah, it's coming up. So that's not a big deal, but I, I rarely ever use fixative. Um, these were Windsor Newton watercolor markers. I had been watching that show Big Sky on Hulu and um, there's a female detective and I and I think I was thinking of her when I was sketching that because it looks kind of like her. And then I just did a couple little flowers playing with those markers. I like the Windsor Newton watercolor markers because they use like regular watercolor pigments in them. Uh, so they're in there fairly light fast. I think most of the colors are. And this was a thistle that again was also done with the Windsor Newton watercolor markers. And I think I have a tutorial for this on my channel. I'm pretty sure I did. I just, I took some photo. I took a photo of this plant when I was walking one morning. Uh, somebody said, yes, yes, you did do a tutorial. That's so cute. Somebody, you guys know what I have for tutorials better than I do. I think. Um, we get another question. How do you decide which paints to use for a particular drawing? Uh, well, I have a lot of palettes, so I just, um, I go with whatever I'm inspired by. Sometimes I'm like, I'm just, I come down here to my studio and I don't know what I want to do. And I feel very just kind of, um, apathetic. And then I'll just kind of start looking at my supplies and then something might like kind of jump out at me that, oh, I haven't used this for a while. This would be fun. And that's kind of how I, how I roll. It's not really scientific, but um, I think with art, you tend to go more by feeling than by thinking. So that's usually what I do. I go by what feels fun to use. This was done with the Derwin Ink Tense Pan Paints. No, I'm sorry, the um, Graphitent Pan Paints. And the prompt I think was fan. Uh, for World Watercolor Month, and I just really love the texture that I was getting in there with those pan paints. I like the pan paints over the pencils personally, and I like the I like their XL graphite blocks as well. I wish they had all those colors from the pan paints because it's nice to have the block. The blocks fit, so you can use a big brush, but the pan paints are half pan, so you're a little limited on the size. But I did tape a little piece of I used some artist tape, and I taped in a little piece of deli paper to prevent that from transferring over onto the thistle. It might have transferred a little bit, then I erased it, and I realized I needed to put something in there. I could spray fix it, but I just too I'm kind of lazy. To, and this was um, this was doing fossils, and I have a long live stream on how to do the fossils with Graphitent, and I'll be posting it in uh, an edited shorter version in the future uh, because I did this project for Derwent for their art educators uh, lesson plans. So there'll be another version of. Um, of this guy right here, because this guy wasn't in the long, long live stream. So I redid this guy. And that's going to be the, uh, a shorter one that I'll post in the future. And let's see. Oh, this next one was really fun. I'm trying to think what I, if I remember what I used for, let's see what's right side up. This is, um, this is some weird like fish that I saw on, um, that I, I found a reference photo for. I don't remember what the, what the prompt was. Actually, this might have been Inktober. We might be into Inktober by now. But um, it was just this weird looking fish. And I used, um, Renes the company Renaissance makes this product called Liquid Charcoal. I think it's called, yeah, Liquid Charcoal. And it comes as this honking tube. It comes in a tube that's like the size of a tube of toothpaste, I swear. And I was mixing that with watercolors and it gave me a beautiful gritty uh, effect, but it made my paper almost feel like sand. And then I used like these really like, uh, well, those those Brute Fooner pencils. I think I'd just gotten that Brute Fooner set of 500 and 20 in. And the Brute Fooner pencils just grabbed on that paper because Arches is kind of rough. This is the cold press, but it's kind of rough. And that with the liquid charcoal on there, it just grabbed that pigment like so well. And it made it look so neon and so crazy that uh, that it was really fun to fun to paint with. And I can't I think I'm, I can't remember if I was using if I was trying to come up with my granulating watercolor palette with what I already had. I think I was. I think that was part of the experiment was I was trying to see what paints I already owned that would be super granulating 
so that I could make make a super granulated palette with what I already had. And uh, I think that's what the uh, what I was doing there. But I love that neon with that liquid charcoal in the background, just adding all that moodiness and that texture. And then to do color pencils, and you can use any color pencils you want because they'll they'll show up really well on that. I just thought that was a really fun effect, and I like that kind of spacey, weird looking, um, weird looking fish. Uh, this was the first time I tried the Art Graph Taylor's chalks. Now Rosie shared her Art Graph Taylor's chalks because they come in these big like chunks and she broke off some pieces to send to me to see if I would like to try them. And uh, I really like the texture. They remind me a lot of the Derwent Intense blocks, but with more earthy tones and maybe a little bit more waxiness to them. They're almost like in between an Intense block and like a watercolor crayon, just that bit of waxy feel that it has to it. And um, I really enjoyed doing that portrait. And then I had some requests for a tutorial. So I do have a tutorial of um, a portrait. Well, it's supposed to be this guy, but he ended up looking a little different in the, in the tutorial, but it's the same techniques and stuff. And this was playing with those art graph and doing a crab. I love to do nautical, nautical pictures, nautical scenes. Um, I don't know. It feels very, uh, very familiar and very cozy. And uh, so we've got this little crab here. And I thought that worked really well with the art graph Taylor's chalks. One day, I think I would, I saw, I think it was Becky Trigger Art. She's another review channel on YouTube. And she had a set that I've never seen sold before. She's from Australia. So maybe they sell different things down there. But it was a set of like all their colors in like a, it was like a box set of all their colors. I thought that was really cool looking. Um, so I've had my eye open for that. If I ever see it, I might just snag, snag one of those up. And this again was, um, this was the art graph, but, and also intense blocks because I was trying to use them together to see if they are like almost the same thing. And honestly, they feel so much the same that if you already have the intense blocks, it wouldn't be a huge benefit to add the art graph to them. But, um, there's something about that, that shape, that Taylor's chalk shape. It just, you know, like I was just saying how some materials, spark your creativity and make you want to draw and make you want to play. Um, I think that's what the art graph just kind of like the fact that you're picking up this chunk of material. It's like being a kid and like playing in a, like a burnt out campfire and you're picking up the chunks of, um, of like uh, you're picking up the chunks of burnt wood and you're picking up like white rocks. If you did that, you like pick up white rocks off the ground and you go draw on a, on a dark rock and picking up chunks of charcoal and drawing on rocks. I mean, I live in the country. My parents would clear lots to build houses on. So there's always like, all this charred wood that you could like, you know, and we're left to our own devices in the woods when my parents are like working on like surveying land and building houses and stuff. So there was a lot of cave art made, I think in the, uh, so someone's going to discover these rural woods of Maine and see all this cave art. And it's just going to be, you know, crap my cousins and I did when we were kids. But anyways, it was really fun. I like the light in the water. It's kind of got that Naples yellow color. That's a, that was an ink tense block. Those are really also really fun projects. And I don't think I have a tutorial for that because I think I was just fooling around with that. Oh, and I was seeing how opaque the white was. I was seeing how opaque the intense white was versus the art graph. And uh, actually, no, I don't have the art graph white. Um, so I was using just the intense and uh, it was very opaque because I had like thinking, oh, I need to get the white one. I need to buy a big block of the white one. But I'm like, slow your roll, Lindsay. You have intense there. That's nice and opaque too. <laughs> and this was on... Uh, this was done with the inexpensive Artify watercolors, and I do have a tutorial for this and a review of those watercolors as well. If you have any questions, um, you can go ahead and put them in the chat. I'm just about to the end of the sketchbook, so I will definitely go through questions with you if you have any. Oh, these were just kind of fooling around. Um, I'm trying to think what I was using. I was, oh, I was playing with those Owen watercolors. Uh, again, another novelty palette that caught my eye on Amazon that I just uh, couldn't help myself. It was like $21 and it was in a yellow tin. So it was just, uh, yeah, I had absolutely no self-control. And I was just kind of playing with them. I was seeing how the salt effect worked and worked and I was just seeing how layering was. And um, I determined they're like identical to the pretty excellent watercolors, but they have their own individual half pans rather than being in a molded like cheap plastic tray. So that was kind of cool. Uh, then they went out of stock and now they're back in stock. So it's been quite a journey with the Owen watercolors apparently. And I've also painted that fish using Derwent Intense pencils and I have a time lapse of that I believe on my channel. I don't know if I posted, I thought I recorded the fish but I don't know if I posted it or not. 
I can't remember. Or maybe I started to record it, but didn't record the whole thing. Sometimes that happens. This was an experiment. I had some Potter's Pink paint from Renaissance, and I just was not getting like the punch that I wanted. And this, and then I had remember remember the big controversy with Daniel Smith last year, where like um, it turns out that they're like Primatech watercolors were not just the rocks that they claimed were in the tube. There's actually like enhancers and stuff. And I thought, well, if Daniel Smith can enhance their colors, what's keeping me from like adding some colors into my Potter's Pink to make it what I want it to be? And that's what I did. I was just kind of experimenting here. And uh, actually, I just recently ordered a tube of My Mary Blue Potter's Pink. And that's really nice. I really like it. Um, I had looked at a swatch of it online and I think it might have been Jane Blundell had recommended that or maybe Kimberly Crick. I can't remember one of the two. And it was just a really pretty shade. And so I bought a tube of that. And that's kind of the Potter's Pink I've been looking for. So um, so I was pretty happy to have found that. And I was just playing, doing some little roses with that color that I made to see if I liked it or not. I better like it. I got three pans of it by the time I was all done mixing and adding and squishing and everything. And I'm not sure exactly what I was doing here. I think I might have just been playing with some colors to see if they granulate. But uh, I don't really remember exactly what I was what I was up to there. Um, and apparently some I this must have been like uh, undirected painting because if I can't think of anything, I just start doodling roses again. And this these carns were done with some uh, the Derwent. Uh, was it the Graphitint? I used a bunch of different things on this one because I wasn't happy with what I, I, I had several times where I was frustrated. It was a Derwent XL, XL Graphite, I think. And then I ended up adding in some gouache or some ink tents or something because it was, I was getting frustrated. I, it was much better at the beginning and then I lost all the freshness by overworking it. And then this is the one I did for a demo during the Derwent uh, XL graphite review. And you can see here, now that it's dry, it actually is quite uh, quite opaque. I kind of wonder if I could buff it though. I'm kind of wondering because how um, graphite gets kind of shiny. I kind of wonder if I buff it a little bit, if I can get that opaque cloudiness off. I wonder, let's just try that a little bit. I wonder if I should use a cloth. Maybe I'll use a uh, paper towel. I kind of think I might be able to burnish it or something and bring the um, bring the sheen back up and make it look less less murky. Uh, I don't know if that's working or not, but I am picking it up on my deli paper. That could be a huge mistake, but hey, you never know unless you try. Hmm. Oh, I think I'm just smudging it. That's probably not a great idea. I was, I, you know what I should do? I should just spray this with fixative because that would bring back some of the brightness. Okay, there is a live stream of this because I was painting that just during a craft night with my friends, and then I liked how it came out, so I thought, oh, that would be a nice, um, a nice live stream. I think I asked people on Instagram if they would watch it if I posted it. And a lot of people were excited about it. So that's the one that we painted live. And I used the Schmincke Super Granulating Colors. So, or some of them, so I could get some nice texture without a lot of work. So that's, I think, the nice thing about the colors that granulate. If you use them in areas like nice big areas where you don't have to do a lot to, um, it adds a lot of interest. And so you don't have to put a lot of work in. So I think this took about an hour. So not too bad for a like a live stream, like to teach and do it all together. Those were the Viviva color sheets. I was just seeing what they would look like on um, on watercolor paper because I had done them in this sketchbook here, which is the paper that comes with the Viviva. And see how, um, look how muted that is on that paper. I think this might even be a mineral paper or something because the way it acts is so strange. I think it's pretty. It's very, very vintage looking. But like, I mean, these are the same colors and look how much brighter that is on the arches. And something else that was really fun, I was um, waiting for my, my daughter had her wisdom teeth out. And so I had my sketchbook in my car because like it's still like COVID precautions and stuff. So I wasn't allowed to stay in the waiting room, but you had to stay on the premises. So I sat out in my car and I was looking around trying to think of something I could draw to take my mind off of just kind of waiting for to be called in to go sit with her in the recovery room. 
after they yanked the teeth out of my precious baby, precious wisdom teeth. Um, and there was nothing really interesting to look at. Then I was looking out the rear, the, the rear view mirror, not the rear view, the side mirrors. And then there was like this old Edwardian type building, like that I could see through the, the uh, side mirror. So I sketched looking through the side mirror and it was really fun. I haven't painted it yet, but I thought I would share that tip just because it talk about a different perspective. You're seeing whatever it is you're seeing, you're seeing in reverse. So even if you're used to driving by a building, seeing it in reverse is just different and weird. Um, this, I am not sure what I was, uh, what I was working on. I think I was just kind of like, uh, planning that the, um, fundraiser that we did for Ukraine, uh, with a little, a little creative on Etsy. She sells Renaissance watercolors, which are produced, which are made in Poland. And a lot of the refugees were going to Poland from the Ukraine. And actually the person that, um, and the company Renaissance is very humble. They didn't really, they didn't want to like publicly say they were housing refugees because, you know, they didn't want to be like using it for personal gain, using that for like, you know, love our business because look what we're doing. You know, they, they thought that was kind of um, like skeevy. So, but like April knew they were doing that. So she's like, Lindsay, you, I want to do a fundraiser. What do you think? And I said, well, how, she's like, I want to donate like the profit of all the paint that I sell during a week. And I said, well, I'll do a, a tutorial. I'll tell people about it. So I think I was just kind of figuring out what, just kind of playing with some ideas there. But anyways, that, that, um, that fundraiser raised five, over $5,000 direct, sent directly to the folks that were housing the, um, the refugees from U Ukraine and Poland to like feed them and house them and give them what they needed. So it was pretty cool. I couldn't believe that. I mean, that's so awesome that just, you know, the kindness of painters, it was able to raise that much money. And I was playing, I don't know, I'm trying to think of what paints I was using here. I don't remember. It wasn't even that long ago. Oh, you know what that was? That was the Viviva pan set in the cork palette, which are the same as the superior paints. They actually, they, I asked them directly if it was and they fessed up. They said, oh yeah, it is. We got our paints from them. We're going to in-house it eventually, but that's what we're doing for now. So, um, so I always appreciate the honesty of a company. And anyways, I was just playing with it there, but I'm going to check and see if we have any questions. Let me find an interesting page to like have this opened up to. How about our cat and our fish? Cat and fish. Why not? Then see what, see what you guys are asking there. All right, I am going to scroll backwards. Oh, you guys are really chatty. Oh my gosh, you know what? I should have asked you to put the word, if you do have a question for me, type the word question in all caps and then uh, then I'll be able to, to spot it easily. I'm rusty, guys. I haven't done a live stream in a couple weeks. Oh, you know what? Maybe you guys don't have any questions. Um, I do not see any, I think that's like the quickest sketchbook tour that I did. I was thinking about recording it, but then it's like, well, if somebody has a question on it, then I can, then I can answer it. Oh, I also, oh, you know, what? I'll show you the artwork from the watercolor crayon class. That's really fun. It's, uh, I'm really pleased with, um, the feedback that I've, that I've received from students. I think, I don't think I have any questions. So. I'm going to go ahead and grab that artwork from the watercolor crayon class. I think I have it all within reach here. All right. We'll take a look at that stuff. So this course is uh, normally $79, but it's on sale 50% off with a coupon code crayon50 or just click the link in the video description. I'm The only links I'm sharing to the class have the coupon code added in, but I always say what the coupon code is because sometimes I, I think people that have like maybe have iPads or something when they click through a link, sometimes I think it just gets rid of the, the coupon code. It's probably some sort of cookie thing. I have no idea, but um, I just, so I just want to make sure that everyone gets a deal. If something happens and you pay full price, all you got to do is email me and I can go in and refund the difference. But so this uh, lesson here would be using the crayons like watercolor, using them transparently, getting the high contrast, this was the fun kind of wind down at the end of the course. It was a uh, kind of loose parkscape and uh, kind of like a reward. Like you did all the hard work and this is the fun, this fun kind of wrap it up type project. Oh my gosh. I've got to, I just noticed a super chat. Thank you very much. I'm going to, I believe that's, I think that's, uh, that is Gina. I thought it was Gina. I recognized that pink flower, but I didn't want to say it till I saw it. So oh, that was very kind of you. I appreciate that. It's very nice. 
Um, this was using the crayons like a watercolor for the background and then layering up the crayon. So this is our first project because I wanted something that would be like um, something easy, something you could really just kind of ease into and learn several techniques at once. So if you are following the, uh, I recommend you follow the lessons in order, but if like you're starting and you do that one project and then you're taking a break from watching the videos, maybe you're, you know, sitting around the coffee table, coloring with your kids or whatever, and you just want to play with your crayons, you would have a bunch of techniques you already learned that you could try and experiment with before you go to the next lesson. So I thought having the kind of building it up opaquely section, getting a little bit of texture, also doing a wash, that sort of thing together would be kind of fun. This one is learning how to um, observe your values and work in monochrome and just kind of really focus on uh, light, medium, and dark and not worry about color so much. So this was using your, um, your values. This was one of the ones towards the end, a little bit more advanced, but to getting the textures of like fur and feathers here on the woodpecker and the texture of bark. And these are all like step-by-step -step drawn in class. So I will show you how to draw like, like line by line, all of these draw, all of these paintings. But if you do not feel comfortable drawing, everything has a reference photo that you could print out and trace if you prefer. But I would suggest you try the drawing, even if you just want to do it in a notebook with a pencil, just to see if you can, because um, it's, it just comes down to practice. It's not difficult. It's just, it's just practice and knowing what lines to put. And eventually you'll know that, you know, by heart, but uh, I highly recommend just, just trying the drawing, even if you don't like it to paint, at least try it, you know, and this was Bird of Paradise, which was so fun because uh, there's so many colors and it just gives you an opportunity to blend and layer and, um, and then end up with a really gorgeous, colorful piece. This little lock was doing texture. I love rusty textures and weathered textures. So it showed you a bunch of different ways to do, to get that sort of effect. And uh, the birthday cake was really fun because again, you get to use the colors and uh, most of these can be done just with a 15 set of watercolor crayons. Um, all the colors can be found in the 30 sets in the 30 set of colors. But um, if you weren't sure and you just want to start with a smaller set, you totally could. The green one, the sunflower, the green sunflower might give you a little bit of trouble just because there's a couple of greens in the 30 set that I use. Um, and the way that Karen Dosh does their set, say of a, everything that's in set, the set of 10 would be in the set of 15. Everything in the set of 15 would be in the set of 30, you know, so they just add on for every set. Um, but your smaller sets have the, the versatile colors. So, you know, you're not hindered by using a smaller set. They've got the best colors. And then, you know, the colors, the additional colors are a little less useful as you go bigger because you, they kind of put, they front load the best ones in the smaller sets. But that's what we're doing in that course. If you are interested in joining us for that, it's a lot of fun. And I also have watercolor crayon tutorials on my YouTube channel if you want to see if, you know, if you want to check that out for free before you're, you know, you commit to doing a course. And you get lifetime access with the courses, with the full length courses like that. So you could buy it on sale and do it, you know, in the summer when you have time or whenever you have time. I'm just going to scroll back and see if there's any questions. Like I said, if you do have a question, type the word question question in all caps so I can see it and I can respond. Um, Forever Learning Art asks, how long is the class on sale? It's on sale through the entire month of April. So um, it would, I don't know, was it 30 days in April? So it'd be through the, it would, it would go off sale May 1st. <laughs> hope that makes sense. I like to do a launch month so that anybody that's a subscriber will have a chance to see the sale offered, the class offered in an amount of time where it would be available to be picked up on sale. Because I, I hate it when I buy something because I'm excited and I buy it right when it comes out and then the price drops like a month later. And I think that's really rude. I'd rather have the people that follow me that, you know, are interested in what I'm doing and actually pay attention and watch my videos. I want them to get the best deal, not, you know, pay the biggest price and then, you know people later get a better deal. I don't feel right about that. So that's why I do it backwards. <laughs> All right. PM Artist Studio asks, oh, they make stencils. They have some really cute stencils. How do you mix in the charcoal and how much do you use? That's a tube. And honestly, I had a wet into wet background. I'll, I'll bring back the painting she was referencing. I can find it here. Right here. 
So I already had the wet and wet wash. I had like, um, oh, I think I had like some raw sienna, some nickel titanate yellow, some cobalt teal, uh, probably some mineral violet. And then I went in, I just kind of got the liquid charcoal and I recommend putting the liquid charcoal in your palette, letting it dry up and then going after it with a wet brush. I just have a better control with paints that way. And then I just went in and just kind of swirled it in. So there really isn't a, um, a technical amount. I just tried to get it into areas where I wanted to have some more shadow. Like I was figuring like a squid might have this kind of a squid ink. So I was really putting it around the, um, the face area here, the tendril, tentacle area. Um, but I don't have a specific amount. It's, you know, it's however much you like, really. And it comes in a tube. You could use it fresh from the tube if you want to, but it does re-wet fine. So that's what I, that's what I prefer, but it's up to you. Um, and that is the Renaissance liquid charcoal it comes in a huge bottle. I mean, if you have a huge tube, you could buy it and split it between friends. Um, Miel asks, what do you do with your sketchbooks? I have a stack of them in the other room. I just stack them up. <laughs> That's what I do with them. They live in, they, they live in a stack. Uh, Chiquita's Crochet asks, I always wanted to paint flowers, but I'm scared to. How do we start? Well, I have a lot of free tutorials for painting flowers. Some really easy ones would be like lilacs and lupins. Um... I have a really easy one on a, of a hydrangea on my channel. Just um, just follow some tutorials and then you'll get comfortable. I even have a class called Watercolor Flower Workshop and it is, uh, it's all loose watercolor florals and it shows you how to do all these basic flowers and then how to put them in wreaths or bouquets or swags so that you can design with them after you learn how to paint them. So it's kind of like a free, free form type. You kind of learn some basic rules and how to put them together so you can create whatever you want to create. But, you know, you just, you just got to start and don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to mess up. Everyone does. Everyone makes messes. I still make messes. All right. Have I missed any other questions? I wanted to share something else too, because, um, Oh, another question. What is, and this is from A Fishes and Loaves Life. What is that cake drawn onto? Love the contrast. It is on uh, Canson Me Tints pastel paper. It's just, uh, it's on the rough side. So if you get the Canson Me Tints paper, it comes in a, a large variety of colors. And one side has a little bit of texture and one side is smooth, almost like a cardstock. And it's totally up to you what you like to use. I prefer a textured paper, but other people prefer a smooth paper. I mean, I do use some smooth papers too. It just depends. But uh, generally with a Canson Me Tints, I tend to use the textured side. And it's just, the, it's the black. And I just got a pad of, of all the black. Uh, Regan is asking, did I make it to the live one? Yes, you are watching live. Marilyn Perez Martinez says, love the Neo Crayon class. I've watched the classes often and even though I haven't had time to do them, I'm picking up tips for my watercolor. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Let's see. Oh, someone's got to, Andy's got to go to work. <laughs> Have a good day at work. All right, I think I caught some people on their lunch break. <laughs> Something I want to share, and I actually have a video coming up on Friday. But you guys can have a sneak peek. So I went, um, if you if you watch Sat Chat, you probably heard that I was looking for a, paint, a palette to take my gouache paints. But I'll show you the one that didn't work out so well first. Uh, I actually haven't looked into this palette since last week when I took it out. Um, but this, the palette, I, I've actually wanted this one for a while because I like the idea that it had a, a water cup on the bottom, but I also have a portable painter and I can't imagine a palette being better for watercolor than the portable painter. So this is a silicone cup. It comes with a strap so you can wear it. And then it's got this part here where you can put your paints. And so I put my gouache in there and there's, they're not, they're, they, you know, they're still actually fairly fresh. But um, I went out painting and then I couldn't, the paint was like drying and get all, getting all crusty in there because it was really sunny. And uh, this, I was trying to use water brushes with this with the wet paint and it was just was not going well. The painting was fine, but it was very frustrating. And luckily I didn't, I, par I painted pretty close to where I was parked and not out in the middle of the woods because I couldn't even shut the palette afterwards because of all the crusty paint. So that didn't work so well. My water brushes, I thought I'd ruined them because they'd gotten so clogged with paint. So then I thought I'm going to dry my gouache out. And so I bought this palette 
And I actually bought both of them. And I didn't know which one would work, but I figured it would make a nice video because then I could kind of figure out what's what works and then share it with people. And so I took this out this weekend where I was walking the dog at the ball field and I brought, well, I brought this little case and I brought this because I can fit them both in my pockets. And then I took my sketchbook here, this little one that I've been working on since probably 2018. Let me see. I'll see what my first, my first, the first date is here. Uh, I didn't date that. I don't know. I think my girls, those are my girls sitting at the, at the beach. And I think they were in junior high. I think it's probably like 2017, maybe. That's a pickle flip flops that one of my girls drew. Uh, 2018. That was at some point in 2018. But anyway, um, let's see right here. So what I did was I clipped, I used my little binder clip. And I clipped it like that. And then it was so easy for me to hold like this with a napkin. And I had mixing space there. I had mixing space here. It worked so well. But the problem was when I got home, I realized that little hinge had snapped off. And I was so bummed because I'm like, this is perfect. But I figured out a way to fix it. And on Friday, on my Frugal Friday video this week, I'm going to show you how to fix broken hinges and stuff like that on your plastic, anything plastic, really. I couldn't believe it worked. It worked so well. And um, I'm super excited to share that tip on Friday. But anyway, uh, now it's actually more sturdy than before. And with this palette, if you if you get this palette, you could actually take that off and you could turn it around and put the hinge here. So if you're left handed, you could hold it with your, your right hand because it swivels both ways and you could have it flip up the other way. But uh, I just actually, after I did that, I colored in the little arrow of where you open it. So that way I wouldn't try to open the other side and like snap the pin again. But I have gouache that's dried down like from here over. This is all gouache. And I, I as it dried, I, I shoved my finger in there to smush out the cracks and to like compress it. And that was a tip from John Muir Laws. And I'm like, that is fantastic. Because I always, I, I usually don't put gouache and half pans because they crack and they fall out you might want to put glue dots on the pans though to keep them in place in case you do drop this when it's open you your pans will go everywhere but it does have that nice lid so that will keep everything where it belongs which is really nice and uh, that worked really well for me so i did want to kind of just share that with you because if you were considering getting one of those palettes i'm definitely recommending this if you're going to use water brushes and let the gouache dry and that was so much better than um than trying to use it wet i don't know what i'm going to do with this palette quite frankly um i really didn't enjoy painting with wet gouache out and about i like i really enjoyed painting with a dry gouache out and about so so there all right let's uh i'm gonna look back and see if there's any other questions and if not then i will probably wrap it up let's put some interesting things here for you to look at while I'm looking for questions. There, we'll put a few, we'll put a few little watercolor crayons in there. That way, that way I can shamelessly, shamelessly plug my class as I look for questions. Um, Oh, and I want to thank Joe Maskey for moderating the chat today. Uh, it was very last minute. I just posted that I was going live and uh, he is always very helpful with folks in the chat and uh, keeping our decorum and uh, our chat a friendly place to be. Noreen asks, Lindsay, can you please recommend the best budget watercolor palette, regular and metallic, but good quality? Um, my recommended recommendation for a budget palette palette would be the Miliang pretty excellent set of 36 half pans. It's available on Amazon for around $20. Sometimes it goes on sale. That is, I, I have not found a palette to beat that as far as quality and value. And for metallics, if you can swing it, I would say go for the Paul Rubens set of 24. They make a set of 12 and they make a set of 48. I feel like the 24 set is just perfect. In fact, it's so perfect that I have it in my, um, in my little right next to my desk. I have, I don't have all my palettes. My palettes are all across the room, but I keep this one right in my desk. These are significantly more sparkly than um, like the Artsy, which is superior brand that I think sells uh, probably 10 or 20 bucks cheaper. Maybe I think this sets around 50. 
if I'm remembering correctly, but uh, they sometimes go on sale. You can wait for a sale. They also have a set of 12. I'm not exactly sure what colors in the set of 12, but the set of 48, I mean, there's such a good variety here. I feel like the set of 48 is kind of overkill. And I have the set of 48 because they sent that to Marie to review at one point, And I use this one. I mean, I'll eventually use this up and I'll, and I'll break into my set of 48, but this would be my recommendation. If this is too, uh, too much to spend, the other one is the uh, Prima Marketing has a set of, I don't know if they have a set of 12 and a set of 24, or if they have, have two different sets of 12, but they have a really, uh, it's nice and opaque and um, strongly sparkly watercolor set. The cakes are round and I know it's made like there is generic versions of it. That's the same thing, um, but I'm, I can't remember who. I'm sure you can find it on Amazon as well. Um, I think Hobby Lobby sells it as well, and those are really also sparkly. Pro they seem to be about about the same. These have also some glitter colors that are um, that have that are really reflective. I think the set of 48 has more of the glitter colors in it too, like that one and that one have actually like tiny little glitters in it, and that one instead of just being um, mica. So that would be my recommendation. A lot of um, metallic watercolors are very, are just not as impressive, but I mean, they were before these came out. I mean, I used to use the Niji ones. They're really cheap, really cheap, but I found the Niji ones can get moldy. I don't know what it is. I don't know if they're using fish scales instead of mica or what, but they can tend to get a little moldy. You can also get iridescent medium and you can mix it into your colors. It's uh, that would work too. It's not exactly the same, but it's pretty close. Uh, Lee Chat says, I'm so glad I caught you live last week. My birthday, on my birthday, I had a Lindsay Cards Marathon. It was so much fun. Oh, that's so awesome. Thank you. Thank you. That's her a screen name is Lee Chat. I know her real name, but I won't say it. So, <laughs> oh, that's fun. Happy birthday. Let's see. Okay. I think I'm caught up. Well, guys, I want to thank you so much for watching my sketchbook flip through. Um, Rosie has her handmade sketchbooks on sale, 20% off through the 20th. So, or probably, probably till the 20th or until she sells out. So if there is something you have your eye on now that I've said it to the world, um, you know, there's just going to be more people vying for those sketchbooks. So just, uh, just to let you know, um, and the watercolor crayon workshop is on through the month and that is 50% off. So if you want to check that out, there's a link in the video description in a coupon code. The link has the code, the coupon code built into it. But if you're watching this on something else and you go to my teachable school, just use the coupon code crayon 50 if you don't see the discount. So that will get you the 50% off savings. Hey, Rosie's actually in the chat. Hey, Rosie, if you guys have questions for her, you can ask her right there. Um, oh yes, and please click the like bu button. Thank you, Ian, for reminding me. Yes, before you go, if you click the like button, that really helps YouTube know that this is something worth watching and they will share it with other people. Otherwise, they don't know. They don't know what people like. So <laughs> they know people like hauls and people like, uh, well, that's pretty much it, hauls. That's what YouTube likes to, <laughs> likes to promote. But uh, I appreciate you guys coming in at last minute and hanging out with me this afternoon. I think I'm going to go upstairs and see if the sun's shining yet and maybe open some windows, let some nice fresh air and maybe go for a walk, take the dog for another walk or something. So that's about it. I appreciate it. And you can, again, watch the replay if you like. Um, oh, somebody's asking if you can get the sketchbooks outside the U.S. I am not sure. Uh, but you could ask Rosie. She's Rosie Garmendia in the chat. She is uh, right there. If she's still there, I'm sure she'll respond to you. All right, guys. Well, have a wonderful rest of your week, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Happy crafting.